I was walking home alone, it was late, and the streets were deserted. I thought it was just another night, nothing out of the ordinary, until I noticed someone behind me. At first, I dismissed it, thinking they were going the same way. But then, they matched my pace, always a few steps behind. It made me uneasy, but I tried to ignore it. I took a few turns, hoping they'd go their way, but they kept following. It wasn't right, I felt a chill down my spine. I quickened my pace, trying to put distance between us, but they did the same, always shadowing me. Fear started creeping in, and I didn't know what to do. I didn't want to turn around, didn't want to confirm my suspicions, but I had to. When I did, they were there, just a figure in the darkness, face obscured. I felt a surge of panic, heart pounding, and I broke into a run. But they chased, always behind me, always just out of sight. I was being stalked, and I didn't know why. I tried to lose them, taking different routes, ducking into alleys, but they were relentless. It felt like they knew my every move, anticipating where I'd go. I called for help, but the streets were empty, the night eerily quiet. It was just me and them, playing this twisted game of cat and mouse. I ducked into a building, hoping to find refuge, but they followed, always right behind me. I was trapped, cornered by this unknown stalker. I saw their face for a split second, just enough to see a twisted smile, eyes fixed on me with an unsettling intensity. It chilled me to the bone, I didn't want to be there anymore. I ran out, adrenaline coursing through me, trying to lose them in the maze of streets. But they were always there, a constant presence in the darkness. I felt like I was losing my mind, paranoia creeping in not knowing when they'd strike, not knowing what they wanted. I tried to call the police, but my hands were shaking, my voice trembling. I couldn't articulate what was happening, it was like a nightmare I couldn't wake up from. I made it home, locked every door and window, but I couldn't shake off the feeling of being watched. Every sound outside made me jump, every shadow made my heart race. I didn't sleep that night, afraid they might come back, afraid they might be lurking in the shadows. The next day, I reported it to the police, but without evidence, without a clear description, there was little they could do. It felt like I was on my own, facing this unseen threat. Days passed, and I was always on edge, always looking over my shoulder, wondering if they were there, watching, waiting. I changed my routine, took different routes, but I couldn't shake off the feeling of being stalked. It was like they were always one step ahead, always there, haunting me. I don't know who they were or what they wanted, but the fear of the unknown, the fear of being followed, still lingers, a nightmare that's become my reality. I was driving home late at night, exhausted after a long day. That's when I saw him, a hitchhiker on the side of the road, thumb out, looking stranded. I felt a pang of sympathy, deciding to offer him a ride. He looked normal enough, just a guy in his mid-thirties, dressed in jeans and a hoodie. I pulled over, rolled down the window, and asked if he needed a lift. He smiled gratefully and hopped into the passenger seat. At first, we exchanged pleasantries, small talk about the weather, the usual. But then, something felt off. He kept glancing at me, a little too often, with an intensity that made me uneasy. I brushed it off trying to focus on the road, but his behavior made me nervous. He started asking personal questions, things that felt intrusive. I tried to deflect, keep the conversation light, but he persisted, probing into my life in a way that felt invasive. I glanced at him occasionally, and his expression seemed to shift, from friendly to something darker, something unsettling. It was a gut feeling, a warning sign that something wasn't right. I tried to ignore it, tried to convince myself I was being paranoid, but his demeanor grew more intense, more focused on me. He started talking about strange things, unsettling things, like how he enjoyed the darkness, how he found peace in the silence of the night. It sent shivers down my spine, it was unnerving. I wanted to ask him to leave, to get out of my car, but I was afraid of how he'd react. He seemed unstable, unpredictable. 
I tried to slow down, hoping to drop him off at the nearest gas station, but he insisted he wanted to go further. Panic started rising in me. I didn't want him to know where I lived. I saw him reaching into his pocket, and my heart skipped a beat. Fear gripped me. I didn't know what he was reaching for, but I didn't want to find out. I made an excuse, saying I needed to stop for gas, hoping it would make him get out. But he just smiled, a smile that sent chills down my spine, and said he'd wait. I pulled into a gas station, my hands trembling as I pretended to fill up the tank. I glanced at him, and he was watching me, studying me with an intensity that made my skin crawl. I paid for the gas, trying to act calm, but I felt like I was being watched, like he was waiting for something. As I got back into the car, I noticed he had something in his hand, something sharp and glinting in the dim light. Panic surged, I didn't want to be alone with him anymore. I made an excuse about needing to use the restroom, hoping to leave him behind, but he insisted on coming with me. Fear choked me, I didn't know what to do. I pretended to head to the restroom but took a detour to the cashier, begging for help without saying a word. But when I glanced back, he was there, right behind me. I didn't know what he was planning, but I knew I had to get away. I bolted for the door, running as fast as I could, heart racing, hoping someone would intervene. I made it outside, saw the gas station attendant calling the police. I told them what happened, but when they looked, the hitchhiker was gone, disappeared into the night. I drove home in a daze, fear and adrenaline coursing through me. I locked every door and window, feeling like I was being watched, like he might come back. The police said they'd keep an eye out, but without a clear description, there was little they could do. I felt helpless, vulnerable, haunted by the realization that I'd offered a ride to someone with disturbing intentions. I was home alone, it was late, and the house was quiet. I was just settling in for the night, thinking about tomorrow, when I heard a noise downstairs. At first, I dismissed it, thinking it was just the house settling. But then, there was another noise, a creak, like someone stepping on the floorboards. Fear trickled in, I knew I was alone, but my heart started pounding. I tiptoed to the top of the stairs, trying to see into the darkness below. I heard whispers, hushed voices, and my blood ran cold. I knew then, someone was in the house, and they weren't supposed to be there. I grabbed my phone, fingers trembling, ready to call the police, but I hesitated. What if they heard me? What if they were armed? I tiptoed back to my room, trying to be silent, trying to figure out what to do. Panic surged, I didn't have a plan, didn't know how to handle this. I locked the door, hoping it would buy me some time, but I knew it wouldn't stop them if they wanted in. I felt vulnerable, exposed. I heard footsteps on the stairs, slow and deliberate. My heart raced, I didn't know what they were after, didn't know what they wanted from me. I searched for something to defend myself with, but the room felt empty, devoid of anything useful. Fear consumed me, I didn't want to confront whoever was there. The door handle jiggled, and I froze. They were trying to get in, testing the lock. Panic clawed at me, I didn't know how long it would hold. I pressed myself against the wall, trying to stay out of sight, praying they would go away. But they didn't, they kept trying, kept pushing. Then, silence. It was eerie, like they were waiting, planning their next move. I strained to hear anything, any clue of what they were doing. Suddenly, a loud crash downstairs, followed by shattering glass. I knew then, they were inside, and they were coming for me. I could hear them, moving through the house, searching. I felt trapped, cornered, with nowhere to hide. I heard them coming closer, footsteps getting louder. I didn't know what to do, didn't know how to protect myself. I made a dash for the window, hoping to escape, but it was too late. They were already in the room, blocking my way out. I saw their faces, masked and menacing. They didn't say anything, their silence was chilling. I pleaded, begged them to leave, 
to take whatever they wanted, but they just advanced, like predators closing in on prey. I felt a surge of adrenaline, a primal instinct to survive. I fought, kicked, screamed, but they overpowered me. They restrained me, tying my hands, rendering me helpless. Fear gripped me. I didn't know what they were going to do. They ransacked a room, searching for valuables, taking whatever they could find. I felt violated, invaded in my own home. I prayed for help, hoping someone would come, but the house remained silent, like it was holding its breath. They left, finally, taking what they wanted, leaving me shaken and traumatized. I couldn't move, couldn't believe what just happened. I called the police, trembling as I recounted the events. They came, took my statement, but the perpetrators were gone without a trace. I felt violated, unsafe in my own home, haunted by the memory of being targeted, of being invaded in the dead of night. I was walking around the town, and there it was an old, decrepit building at the end of the street. It had been abandoned for years, boarded up windows, graffiti covering the walls. I don't know what possessed me, but I wanted to explore it. It was late, and the night was cold. The streets were deserted, the only sound was the wind whistling through the empty alleyways. I made my way to the building, a sense of curiosity and thrill building within me. The door was barely hanging on its hinges, creaking as I pushed it open. The air inside was stale, a mix of dampness and decay. I flicked on my flashlight and stepped in cautiously. The interior was eerie, shadows dancing along the walls as my light pierced the darkness. Broken furniture lay scattered around, and the floorboards groaned under my weight. I could hear faint noises rustling, murmurs. I hesitated, debating whether to leave or keep going. Curiosity got the better of me. I wanted to see what was making those sounds. As I ventured deeper into the building, the noises grew louder. I strained to listen, trying to make out the voices. Fear started creeping in. I realized I might not be alone. I turned a corner and saw them figures huddled together, talking in hushed tones. They looked rough, disheveled, like they didn't belong there. Squatters, maybe, seeking shelter in this abandoned place. I froze, uncertain of what to do. Should I turn back? Should I try to sneak out without them noticing me? But it was too late, one of them looked up, catching a glimpse of my flashlight. They stood up abruptly, their faces obscured by the darkness. Fear surged, I didn't know what they were capable of. They started moving towards me, slowly but purposefully. I felt a surge of panic, my heart pounding against my chest. I wanted to run, to get out of there, but my feet wouldn't move. I was rooted to the spot, trapped in this tense moment. I managed to turn around and bolt, my footsteps echoing in the empty corridors. Panic set in, I didn't know if they were chasing me, didn't know if I was safe. I heard their voices behind me, shouting, getting closer. Adrenaline coursed through me. I needed to find a way out, fast. I stumbled over debris, my heart racing, lungs burning. I didn't look back, I was too scared to see if they were gaining on me. I found an exit, a broken door, and burst through it, into the cold night air. I didn't stop running until I was far away, until I felt safe. I called the police, breathless and terrified, explaining what happened. They said they'd check it out. But I knew they might not find anyone. I couldn't shake off the feeling of being watched, of being pursued. It was like they were still out there, lurking in the shadows. I stayed awake that night, haunted by the encounter, by the realization that danger could be lurking in places you least expect. It was one of those nights, where sleep seemed elusive, so I found myself scrolling through forums online. I stumbled upon a chat room, nothing out of the ordinary, just people discussing random topics. I joined in, looking for some distraction. The conversation flowed casually, discussing movies, hobbies, the usual chatter you'd expect. 
But then, someone new joined the chat, and things took a turn. Their username was obscure, something cryptic that caught everyone's attention. They started asking strange questions, delving into dark and unsettling topics. At first, I thought they were just trying to be edgy, seeking attention in an odd way. But the more they talked, the more unsettling it became. Their messages were cryptic, hinting at things that made my skin crawl. I tried to steer the conversation elsewhere, but they kept bringing it back to disturbing subjects. I felt a sense of unease settling in, a feeling that this person wasn't just joking around. Their messages were too sinister, too focused on things that weren't right. I tried to disconnect, to leave the chat, but they started addressing me directly, asking personal questions that made me uncomfortable. They seemed to know things about me, things they shouldn't have known. Fear started bubbling within me, it was like they were watching me, studying me. I tried to brush it off, to convince myself it was just a troll trying to get a reaction. But their messages grew more intense, more threatening. They started talking about things that felt too real, too close to home. They mentioned details about my life that weren't public, things only someone close would know. Panic set in, I didn't know who this person was, how they knew these things. I tried to block them, to shut down the chat, but they kept finding a way back in. They started making threats, vague but menacing. I didn't know if they were serious, didn't know if I was in danger. I closed the chat, turned off my computer, hoping it would all go away. But then, I started receiving messages on my phone, from the same username, the same cryptic threats. I felt a surge of terror, they knew how to reach me, how to invade my personal space. I didn't want to respond, but the messages kept coming, growing more sinister by the minute. I called the police, explaining what was happening, but they said they couldn't trace the messages without more concrete evidence. I felt helpless, vulnerable, like I was being watched from afar by someone with dangerous intentions. I turned off my phone, locked all the doors and windows, but I couldn't shake off the feeling of being targeted. It was like they were still there, lurking in the shadows of the digital world. I couldn't sleep, couldn't stop thinking about what might happen next. The fear of the unknown, of being tracked by this mysterious and dangerous individual, haunted me. I considered changing my number, deleting my online profiles, but I knew it might not be enough. It felt like they had invaded my world, leaving a chilling imprint on my life. I stayed awake, feeling their presence in every online notification, in every creak of the house. It was a nightmare that didn't seem to end. It was a late evening, and I was walking back from a charity event I had volunteered for. I took a shortcut through an area I hadn't been before and stumbled upon an alley that seemed to lead to a small clearing. As I walked closer, I noticed makeshift tents and tarps scattered across the ground. At first, I thought it was just an abandoned campsite, but then I saw shadows moving within the darkness. I felt a shiver down my spine, a sense of unease creeping in. It was a homeless encampment, and the inhabitants didn't seem too thrilled about my presence. I tried to back away, to leave without causing any trouble, but it was too late. They noticed me, and suddenly, I felt eyes on me from all directions. A man stepped forward, dirty and disheveled, eyeing me with suspicion. I tried to explain that I was just passing through, that I meant no harm, but he didn't seem convinced. More people emerged from the shadows, their faces hardened, their eyes filled with distrust. I could feel the tension rising, I didn't know what to do. I held up my hands in a sign of surrender, trying to show them I meant no harm. But they started shouting, accusing me of intruding, of being a threat to their safety. I tried to reason with them, telling them about the charity work I did, hoping they'd understand. But their hostility grew, their voices becoming more aggressive. I felt a knot in my stomach, fear gripping me. I didn't want any trouble, I just wanted to leave, but they surrounded me, blocking my path. I tried to step back, to find an opening, but they closed in, their faces contorted in anger. I could see glints of something metallic, makeshift weapons in their hands. 
Panic surged. I was outnumbered, trapped in this isolated place with people who saw me as a threat. I didn't know if they were going to attack, didn't know what they were capable of. I pleaded with them, begged them to let me go, but my words fell on deaf ears. They were convinced I was there to cause trouble, to disrupt their lives. I felt a shove from behind, stumbled and fell to the ground. I tried to get up, to run, but they were all around me now, closing in like a pack of predators. I could hear their angry voices, their threats getting louder. I felt a surge of adrenaline, a primal instinct to survive, to escape this terrifying situation. I scrambled to my feet and bolted, running as fast as I could, their shouts echoing in the night behind me. I didn't dare look back, I just wanted to get away. I could hear footsteps chasing after me, getting closer. Fear fueled my run, I didn't know if they were armed, if they intended to hurt me. I reached the main street, out of breath, heart pounding. I didn't stop until I was surrounded by the bustling noise of the city, feeling a sense of relief wash over me. I called the police, explained what happened, but by the time they arrived, the homeless encampment was deserted. There was no trace of the people who had caused me such terror. I felt shaken, haunted by the hostility and aggression I had encountered. I didn't understand why they had reacted that way, I was just trying to pass through. It was a chilling reminder of the dangers that lurk in unexpected places, a nightmare that left me feeling vulnerable and unsafe. It was one of those nights where I had to take the last bus home, and I found myself stranded at a deserted bus stop. The street was empty, illuminated by a flickering streetlight that cast eerie shadows. I checked my phone, no signal. I looked around, feeling a sense of unease settling in. It was so quiet, too quiet for a usually busy stop. I tried to keep calm, telling myself the bus might be running late. But then, I noticed figures emerging from the darkness, approaching the bus stop. At first, I thought they were just fellow commuters, but as they got closer, I could see something wasn't right. Their gait was purposeful, almost predatory. I felt a knot in my stomach, a sense of dread creeping in. They didn't look friendly, their faces were hardened, their eyes gleaming in the dim light. I tried to blend in, to act like I didn't notice them, hoping they'd pass by without trouble. But they lingered, eyeing me with an intensity that made me shiver. I looked around, hoping for someone else to show up, but the street remained empty, silent except for their murmurs. I considered walking away, finding another route home, but they blocked my path, cutting off any escape. Panic surged, I didn't know what they wanted, but I knew it wasn't good. One of them stepped forward, a menacing look in his eyes. He started asking questions, invasive questions that made me uncomfortable. I tried to keep my answers short, to not provoke them, but they kept pressing, getting closer. I could smell alcohol on their breath, a mix of hostility and something darker. I felt trapped, vulnerable at this deserted bus stop with strangers who felt threatening. I wished desperately for the bus to arrive, to break this tense moment. But time dragged on, and the bus didn't come. They started making comments, threatening comments that sent a chill down my spine. I considered running, making a dash for it, but fear paralyzed me. I didn't know if they would chase, if they had anything dangerous on them. I tried to reason with them, to appeal to their sense of reason, but their hostility grew. They were getting agitated, aggressive. I reached for my phone, intending to call for help, but they noticed and stepped closer, demanding I put it away. I felt a surge of panic, a sense of being completely isolated and vulnerable. I didn't know if anyone would come to my rescue, the street was eerily quiet. They surrounded me, their voices growing louder, more threatening. I felt like a trapped animal, unsure of how to escape. I considered screaming, hoping to draw attention, but fear clenched my throat shut. I didn't want to provoke them further. I tried to inch away, to create some distance, but they closed in, blocking my every move. It was like they were toying with me, enjoying the fear they were instilling. 
I felt a shove from behind, stumbled, and fell to the ground. My heart raced. I didn't know what they were planning, but I knew I had to get away. I scrambled to my feet, desperate to escape, but they grabbed me, restraining me. Panic surged. I didn't know what they were going to do. I fought, kicked, screamed, but they overpowered me. I felt a surge of adrenaline, a primal instinct to survive. They took what they wanted, leaving me shaken and traumatized. I lay there, terrified and helpless, until they finally left. I called for help, explaining what happened, but by the time anyone arrived, the menacing strangers were long gone. I felt violated, unsafe in a place I had thought was familiar. It was a nightmare that shattered my sense of security, leaving me haunted by the encounter at the deserted bus stop. I found myself walking home alone in the dead of night. The streets were deserted, and the only sounds were the echoes of my footsteps on the pavement. I kept glancing over my shoulder, feeling a sense of unease. I knew I was being paranoid, but the darkness seemed to amplify everything. As I turned a corner onto a dimly lit street, I noticed a fan parked nearby, its engine running. It seemed out of place, and I quickened my pace, hoping to get away from it. But then, I heard footsteps behind me, getting closer. I felt a chill run down my spine, a sense of dread taking hold. I tried to walk faster, but the footsteps quickened too, echoing in the silent night. Panic surged, I didn't want to turn around, didn't want to see who was following me. I reached for my phone, intending to call for help, but before I could even dial, I felt a hand clamp down on my shoulder. I turned around, heart pounding, and saw a figure looming over me, a man, his face obscured in the darkness. Fear gripped me, I didn't know what he wanted. He demanded I come with him, his voice cold and commanding. Panic set in, I knew I had to get away, had to fight back. I screamed, hoping someone would hear, but the street remained eerily quiet. I thrashed, trying to break free, but his grip was strong, unyielding. He tried to pull me towards the van, his intentions clear. Adrenaline surged, I kicked, clawed, screamed for help, anything to escape his grasp. I felt a surge of panic, a fight-or-flight instinct taking over. I managed to break free, running as fast as I could, heart pounding in my chest. I could hear him behind me, chasing, his footsteps getting louder. I didn't dare look back, I just ran, trying to get away from this nightmare. I darted into side streets, hoping to lose him, but he was persistent, closing in with every turn. Fear consumed me, I didn't know if he had help if this was a trap. I spotted a lit storefront in the distance, a beacon of hope. I ran towards it, feeling a sense of relief wash over me when I saw people inside. I burst into the store, breathless, frantic, explaining what happened. They called the police, and I huddled in the safety of the store, feeling a mix of terror and relief. The police arrived, took my statement, but by the time they got to the area, the man and the van were gone. I felt a shiver of fear, realizing how close I had come to being abducted. It was a nightmare that shattered my sense of security, leaving me haunted by the terror of that night. I was driving back home after a long day. The road stretched ahead, empty except for the occasional passing car. Suddenly, my car started sputtering, and the engine gave out. Panic surged, I pulled over to the side, realizing I was stranded in the middle of nowhere. I tried to start the engine, but it was no use. I felt a sense of vulnerability. I was alone, with no one in sight and no signal on my phone. I decided to wait for help, hoping someone would pass by and offer assistance. I sat there in the darkness, feeling the minutes tick by slowly. Then, I heard the sound of a vehicle approaching. Relief washed over me, maybe it was someone who could help. But as the vehicle got closer, I noticed something unsettling. It was an old van, rusty and worn, moving slowly. 
I felt a pang of unease. Something didn't feel right. The van pulled over in front of my car, and two men stepped out. They looked rough, unkempt, and something about their demeanor sent shivers down my spine. They approached, asking if I needed help. I hesitated, unsure of their intentions, but I desperately needed assistance. I explained my situation, hoping they would offer some assistance. But their expressions seemed off, calculating, almost predatory. They offered to give me a ride to the nearest gas station, and I felt a surge of relief at the thought of giving help. But something about their offer didn't sit right with me. I declined politely, saying I would wait for a tow truck or someone else to pass by. But they insisted, their tone becoming more forceful. I felt a chill run down my spine, a sense of alarm growing within me. I knew I shouldn't trust them, but I also didn't want to be stranded in the dark. They started getting closer, their voices growing more insistent, more threatening. Fear clenched my chest, I didn't know what to do. I tried to stand my ground, to assert that I didn't need their help, but they were persistent. They kept approaching, their intentions becoming clearer. Panic surged, I felt trapped, vulnerable in this isolated place with strangers who seemed dangerous. I needed to get away. I made an excuse, saying I had someone coming to help me, hoping they would leave. But they didn't buy it, they were closing in, blocking my escape. I reached for my phone, intending to call for help, but one of them snatched it from my hand. I felt a surge of fear, a sense of being completely helpless. They started making threats, menacing threats that made my blood run cold. I didn't know if they were armed didn't know what they were planning. I tried to reason with them, to negotiate my way out of the situation, but they seemed beyond reason. They were advancing, closing in on me with malicious intent. I felt a surge of adrenaline, a primal instinct to survive. I bolted, ran into the darkness, hoping to find shelter, find safety. I could hear their footsteps behind me, getting louder. Fear fueled my run, I didn't know if they were chasing me, didn't know if I could outrun them. I ran until I found a house with lights on, and I pounded on the door, begging for help. The occupants let me in, and I explained what happened, shaking and terrified. They called the police, and I huddled inside, feeling a mix of relief and terror. The police arrived, but the strangers were long gone. I felt shaken, traumatized by the encounter. It was a nightmare that shattered my sense of security. It was late at night, and I was home alone, winding down after a long day. My phone rang, and without thinking much, I picked it up. But there was silence on the other end. I assumed it was a wrong number and hung up. Moments later, the phone rang again. This time, there was heavy breathing on the line. I felt a chill run down my spine, a sense of unease settling in. I asked, who is this, but there was no response, just the sound of breathing. I hung up, trying to shake off the unease. But the calls continued, each time with more intensity. Sometimes it was just silence sometimes whispers that I couldn't make out. I tried to ignore it, telling myself it was probably a prank. But as the night wore on, the calls became more frequent, more threatening. The caller started making unsettling remarks, things only someone close to me could know. Fear gripped me. I felt like I was being watched, like someone was right outside my window. I checked the locks on the doors and windows, feeling a growing sense of paranoia. I didn't know if it was just a prank or if I was genuinely in danger. I called the police, but they said they couldn't do much without concrete evidence. I felt helpless, alone with this unknown caller terrorizing me. I tried to reach out to friends, hoping for some comfort, but it was late, and no one picked up. I was alone, with this unknown caller invading my sense of security. The calls became more aggressive, more threatening. I could feel my heart racing every time the phone rang. I didn't want to pick up, but I couldn't ignore it either. I started to disconnect everything, 
I turned off the phone, unplugged it, hoping it would stop. But then, the calls started coming from unknown numbers. I felt trapped, cornered by this unknown person's torment. Every creak in the house made me jump. Every shadow seemed like a lurking figure. I couldn't sleep, couldn't relax. The fear was consuming me. I felt like a prisoner in my own home, with no idea who was on the other end of that phone. I considered leaving, going somewhere safe, but I was too scared to step outside. What if the caller was watching, waiting for me to leave? I called a friend, desperate for some company, someone to calm my nerves. Thankfully, they answered, and they stayed on the line with me through the night. The calls didn't stop, they continued relentlessly. The fear kept growing, I felt like I was in a horror movie, a nightmare I couldn't wake up from. The police promised to investigate, but there wasn't much they could do. The calls were coming from untraceable sources, leaving me feeling exposed and vulnerable. I kept all the lights on, double-checked every lock, but nothing felt safe. I couldn't shape the feeling that someone was out there, watching, waiting. The night seemed never-ending, filled with terror and uncertainty. I didn't know when it would end, when the calls would finally stop. Eventually, the calls did stop, but the fear lingered. I felt like I was always looking over my shoulder, always on edge. Even though the calls ceased, the ordeal had left its mark. I couldn't shake off the feeling of being watched, of being vulnerable and exposed. It was a terrifying experience that shattered my sense of security. I didn't know if the caller was just a prankster or if I was genuinely in danger, and that uncertainty haunted me. It was late, and I was heading back to my car after a long day at work. The parking garage was mostly empty, the only sound being the echo of my footsteps. As I approached my car, I noticed a figure lingering in the shadows. I felt a twinge of unease, something about the situation felt off. I tried to shake off the feeling, telling myself it was just my imagination. But as I got closer to my car, the figure stepped forward, blocking my path. I stopped, feeling a surge of alarm. The figure was a man, his face obscured in the darkness. He started moving towards me, his footsteps echoing in the garage. I felt a knot in my stomach, a sense of danger creeping in. I tried to remain calm, asking if he needed something, trying to defuse the situation. But he didn't respond, just kept advancing towards me. Panic surged, I didn't know what he wanted didn't know if he was armed. I reached for my keys, intending to unlock my car and get away, but my hands were shaking so much that I struggled to find the right key. The man kept getting closer, his movements purposeful. Fear gripped me. I felt like I was trapped, cornered in this dimly lit garage. I finally managed to unlock the car and jumped in, locking the doors. I started the engine, ready to get out of there. But then I realized something horrifying, the man was blocking my exit. He stood in front of my car, staring at me with an unsettling intensity. I felt a surge of terror, a sense of being completely trapped. I honked the horn, hoping to attract attention, but the garage remained eerily quiet. The man didn't budge, he just stood there, a menacing presence in the dimly lit space. I considered reversing and finding another way out, but fear held me back. What if he had accomplices, or if they were waiting outside? I felt a surge of panic, a desperate need to get away from this danger. I considered calling for help, but my phone was in the back seat, out of reach. The man started making threats, his voice low and menacing. I didn't know what to do, didn't know how to get out of this nightmare. I honked the horn again, hoping someone would hear and come to my aid. But there was still no response, no sign of anyone else in the garage. I considered making a run for it, but fear paralyzed me. I didn't know if he would try to stop me, didn't know if he had anything dangerous on him. I felt a surge of adrenaline, a fight or flight instinct taking over. I revved the engine, hoping to scare him off, but he remained unmoved. 
I hunt continuously, hoping the noise would deter him. But he just stood there, a menacing figure in the darkness. I saw a security camera mounted on the wall and prayed that someone was watching, that someone would intervene. But there was no sign of any help coming. I felt a surge of desperation, a sense of being completely alone with this threat. I wished desperately for someone to come, for someone to help me out of this terrifying situation. The man continued to stand there, making threats. I didn't know if he was waiting for something or if he had something sinister planned. I felt a surge of panic, a sense of vulnerability and exposure. I didn't know how long I could stay in the car, trapped by this man's menacing presence. I considered trying to reason with him, to appeal to his humanity, but something told me it was futile. He seemed intent on instilling fear, on exerting control. I glanced around, hoping for any sign of help, any sign of an escape route. But the garage remained desolate, a silent witness to this terrifying encounter. I considered sounding the alarm, hoping it would attract attention. But before I could even reach for it, the man finally turned and walked away. I felt a surge of relief, but it was mixed with fear. I didn't know if he would come back, if he was just waiting for the right moment. I waited, hesitant to move, hesitant to leave the safety of the car. After what felt like an eternity, I cautiously drove out of the garage, heart pounding in my chest. I didn't look back, I just drove, desperate to get away from that place, from that sense of danger and terror. I decided to rent out my spare room on Airbnb, a little extra cash and maybe some interesting company. A guy named Mark booked for a couple of nights, seemed pretty normal from his profile. The day he arrived, everything seemed fine. He seemed like a regular guy, polite, not too talkative. I showed him around, gave him the keys, and went about my evening routine. Later that night, I heard some noise coming from his room, muffled voices, maybe talking on the phone. I thought nothing of it, assuming he was catching up with someone. But as the night wore on, the noise escalated. I could hear him pacing, muttering to himself. I didn't want to intrude, but something about it felt off. I knocked on his door, asking if everything was okay. He opened it slightly, his eyes darting around, avoiding mine. He said he was fine, just on an important call. I didn't want to pry, so I went back to my room, but I couldn't shake off the unease. The noises continued, growing louder, more agitated. I considered calling the Airbnb support line, but I didn't want to create unnecessary drama. I decided to wait it out, hoping it was just a one-time thing. But then, things got worse. I heard slamming, crashing sounds coming from his room. Fear searched, I didn't know what was happening in there. I knocked again, this time more urgently, asking if he needed help. He opened the door slightly, his eyes bloodshot, his demeanor intense. He muttered something about a misunderstanding and slammed the door shut. I felt a surge of alarm, a sense of danger lurking. I considered calling the police, but I didn't want to overreact, didn't want to escalate the situation. I tried to rationalize, maybe he was just having a rough night, maybe I was misinterpreting things. But the atmosphere in the house felt tense, uncomfortable. I decided to stay in my room, lock the door, and wait for morning. I didn't want to confront him, I just wanted him gone. But then, in the dead of night, I heard him moving around the house. Fear gripped me, I didn't know what he was doing, didn't know if he was armed. I peeked out cautiously, saw him pacing, muttering to himself. He seemed agitated, disturbed. I didn't want to confront him alone, didn't want to risk escalating things. I called a friend, whispered urgently about the situation, asking for advice. My friend suggested calling the police, better to be safe than sorry. I hesitated, but the noises were getting louder, more alarming. I dialed 911, explaining the situation, feeling a mix of fear and guilt for involving the authorities. The dispatcher assured me they'd send someone, asked me to stay in my room and lock the door. 
I complied, feeling a sense of relief that help was on the way. But then, the noises stopped. I heard his footsteps coming towards my room, slow and deliberate. Panic surged. I didn't know what he was planning. I barricaded the door with whatever I could find, my heart pounding in my chest. I whispered to the dispatcher, told him he was trying to get into my room. I heard him pounding on the door, demanding to be let in. Fear consumed me. I didn't know what he'd do if he got in. I heard sirens in the distance, a glimmer of hope. I yelled that the police were on their way, hoping it would make him stop. The pounding stopped, replaced by hurried footsteps, then silence. I stayed locked in my room, trembling, until I heard the police arrive. They took him away, subdued and shouting incomprehensibly. They assured me he wouldn't be returning, that I was safe now. I felt a mix of relief and horror. I couldn't sleep, couldn't shake off the terror of that night, the fear of what could have happened. The next morning, I cancelled his reservation and contacted Airbnb, explaining what had happened. I didn't want anyone else to experience that nightmare. I remember that night vividly, the night that turned a simple office job into a nightmare. It was one of those late shifts, the kind where the only company you have is the soft hum of fluorescent lights and the eerie stillness of an empty building. I'd always been a bit uneasy working late, but that night took my discomfort to a whole new level. I was engrossed in my work, typing away at my computer, trying to meet a deadline that seemed to loom closer with every passing second. The office was silent, almost suffocatingly quiet, except for the occasional creaks of the building settling in the night. As I worked, I heard something, a faint sound that made me pause. Footsteps, slow and deliberate, echoing down the hallway. My heart skipped a beat. It wasn't uncommon for the building's security to make rounds, but this sounded different, almost deliberate in its approach. I tried to shake off the unease, convincing myself it was just my mind playing tricks on me. But then, the footsteps stopped abruptly, right outside my office door. The silence that followed was deafening, a heavy anticipation hanging in the air. I glanced at the clock, realizing it was past midnight, no one should have been there at that hour. I hesitated, debating whether to call out, my voice caught in my throat. Something felt off, a cut feeling that screamed danger. Before I could react, the door creaked open slowly, and a figure emerged from the darkness. My breath caught in my chest as I recognized the silhouette. It wasn't someone from security or a late working colleague. It was a stranger, an intruder whose intentions were unknown. They moved slowly, purposefully, their footsteps echoing in the silent office. Their presence felt menacing, a chilling aura that sent shivers down my spine. I tried to speak, to demand an explanation, but fear rendered me mute. The intruder didn't acknowledge me, instead, they prowled around the office, their movements calculated, as if they were searching for something specific. My mind raced with questions, with fears of what might happen next. I glanced around for any means of escape, but the office felt like a trap, a maze of cubicles and closed doors. Panic began to rise within me, a desperate need to get out of there, to flee from the danger that lurked inches away. I reached for my phone my trembling fingers fumbling as I dialed emergency services. But as the call connected, the intruder's gaze locked onto me, freezing me in place. I couldn't utter a word, my voice caught in the grip of fear. Their eyes bore into mine, cold and unrelenting, devoid of any humanity. It was a chilling sight, one that made my blood run cold. I heard the dispatcher's voice on the other end of the line, asking for my location, but I couldn't respond. The intruder was too close, too menacing, a looming threat that seemed to grow with every passing second. I had no choice but to hide, to find refuge somewhere, anywhere within the confines of that office. I ducked behind a desk, trying to control my rapid breaths, hoping beyond hope that the intruder wouldn't find me. Time seemed to stand still as I huddled in the darkness, my heart pounding in my chest. I could hear them moving through the office their footsteps echoing like a menacing drumbeat. The minutes felt like an eternity, 
the silence broken only by the occasional shuffle or creak of the floorboards. I was paralyzed with fear, my mind racing through a thousand scenarios of what could happen next. I could sense the intruder drawing closer, their presence looming just beyond where I hid. Every instinct screamed at me to flee, to make a dash for safety, but the fear rooted me in place, a silent prisoner to my terror. Suddenly, the footsteps halted, the silence becoming suffocatingly heavy. I held my breath, fearing that any sound might give away my position. Then, a voice, a low, guttural whisper that sent chills down my spine. The intruder spoke, their words barely audible but laced with a sinister edge. They knew I was there, hiding in the darkness, and they were taunting me. My mind raced with thoughts of survival, of finding a way out of this nightmare. But the intruders seemed to anticipate my every move, as if they were playing a twisted game of cat and mouse. I wanted to scream, to call out for help, but fear clutched my throat, rendering me silent. I was trapped, cornered by a malevolent presence that showed no sign of leaving. Suddenly, the office lights flickered, casting eerie shadows across the room. In that momentary darkness, I saw the silhouette of the intruder looming closer, inches away from where I cowered. Time seemed to stop as our eyes locked, a chilling understanding passing between us. I felt a surge of adrenaline, a desperate need to fight, to do anything to survive. As the lights flickered back on, I bolted from my hiding place, racing towards the exit with every ounce of strength I had left. I didn't look back, fueled by the primal need to escape the danger that lurked behind me. I burst through the office doors, stumbling into the empty corridor, my heart pounding like a drum in my chest. I ran, not daring to stop until I reached the safety of the street, the cold night air a welcome relief. I called for help, the words tumbling out in a rush as I explained the terror I'd faced, the danger that lurked in the office. Police arrived swiftly, searching the building with caution, but the intruder was gone, leaving nothing but an unsettling sense of fear in their wake. As I sat there, trembling, recounting the harrowing encounter to the authorities, I couldn't shake the feeling of being watched, the memory of those cold, haunting eyes burning into my mind. That night changed me, left an indelible mark on my soul, a brush with danger that shattered the illusion of safety. I never worked late again, haunted by the memory of that menacing intruder who turned a quiet office into a living nightmare. I had a part-time job delivering pizzas, it was straightforward, and usually, things went smoothly. But that night, everything went haywire. I received an order for a house on the outskirts of town. It was late, well past midnight, but the address seemed legit. I figured someone was pulling an all-nighter and wanted some pizza. I plugged the address into the GPS and headed out. The road got darker, the house is more sparse but I trusted the GPS. The house I arrived at seemed abandoned, a dilapidated structure with boarded up windows. I double checked the address, it matched the one on the receipt. I hesitated, but the pizza was already paid for, so I decided to knock, hoping someone was inside. I heard faint noises, maybe footsteps, but no one answered the door. I felt uneasy, like something was off. I should have left, I was focused on doing my job, getting the pizza delivered. I knocked again, a bit louder this time, calling out that I had their pizza. The noises inside stopped abruptly, leaving an eerie silence. I heard shuffling behind the door, then it creaked open slightly. I caught a glimpse of a shadowy figure, they muttered something about finally being hungry. I tried to hand over the pizza, but they didn't take it. Instead, they stepped out their face hidden in the darkness. I realized something was seriously wrong. This person wasn't here for pizza, they were here for something else. Fear crept in, but I tried to keep calm, attempted to defuse the situation. I told them it was the wrong address, that I must have made a mistake. But they didn't seem interested in listening. They just stood there, sizing me up. I should have left right then. But I felt frozen, rooted to the spot. I knew I needed to get out of there, 
but my instincts were conflicting with my desire to deliver the pizza. The figure suddenly lunged forward, grabbing the pizza box from my hands. They opened it, inspecting the contents with a deranged intensity. I took a step back, sensing danger. I tried to reason with them, offering to refund the money, anything to get away. But they didn't respond, they just stared at me, their gaze unsettling. I felt like prey, like I'd walked into a trap. They muttered something about not being satisfied, their voice low and menacing. I knew I had to leave, had to get out of there fast. I turned around to walk away, but before I could move, they lunged at me. I felt a sharp pain in my shoulder, a searing agony. I stumbled backward, realizing they'd stabbed me. Panic surged, I didn't know what to do, didn't know if I could escape. I ran, clutching my wounded shoulder, trying to put as much distance as I could between us. Adrenaline coursed through me, propelling me forward. I heard footsteps behind me, heavy and determined. Fear gripped me, I didn't know if they were chasing me, didn't know if I was safe. I didn't stop running until I reached my car. I fumbled with the keys, my hand shaking with terror. I locked the doors, started the engine, and sped away not looking back until I reached a safe distance. My shoulder throbbed with pain, I needed medical help. I called the police, explained what had happened, and they directed me to the nearest hospital. The doctors patched me up, saying I was lucky the wound wasn't deeper. But I couldn't shake off the terror of that night, the fear of what could have happened. The police investigated, but the house I mentioned was deserted, like no one had lived there for years. There was no trace of the person who attacked me. I quit my job. I couldn't stomach the thought of delivering pizzas anymore, the fear of encountering something like that again. My neighbor, Mr. Johnson, lived two houses down from me. He was always a bit peculiar but nothing that raised too many red flags. That is, until one late night. I was taking out the trash, a routine chore before calling it a night, when I heard shouting. At first, I thought it might be a TV or something, but the voices grew louder, more intense. I glanced towards Mr. Johnson's house and saw him on his front porch, yelling at someone, no, yelling at no one. His voice echoed through the quiet street, unsettling in the dead of night. I hesitated, should I intervene, ask if everything was okay? But something about the way he was yelling, the fury in his voice, made me step back, made me reconsider. I hurried back inside, locking the door behind me. I tried to shake off the unease, telling myself it was probably just stress or something. But then, the shouting turned into something else, banging, crashing sounds, like something being thrown around. Fear clawed at me. I didn't know what was happening over there. I considered calling the police, but what would I say? That my neighbor was making noise. It didn't feel like enough to involve the authorities. The noises subsided, replaced by an eerie silence. I tried to convince myself it was over, that I could go to bed and forget about it. But then, I heard footsteps outside my door, slow and deliberate. Panic surged. Was Mr. Johnson outside my house? I peeked through the curtains and saw him, standing on the sidewalk, staring right at my window. His eyes seemed wild, unblinking, fixed on my house. I felt a chill run down my spine. Something was seriously wrong. I ducked away from the window, heart pounding, trying to think of what to do. I debated calling the police again, feeling ridiculous for even considering it. But his behavior was alarming, disturbing. I heard him muttering, something about someone being a threat. Was he talking about me? Fear gripped me, a sense of being in danger in my own home. I stayed away from the windows, trying to stay calm, trying not to let the fear consume me. But the minutes felt like hours, the silence outside unbearable. I considered reaching out to other neighbors, asking if they'd heard or seen anything. But what if Mr. Johnson was unpredictable, dangerous? I heard him moving around outside, pacing back and forth. 
The tension in the air was palpable, suffocating. I debated calling a friend, someone who might be awake, someone who could help. But I didn't want to worry anyone or put them in danger. I heard a loud bang, like something hitting the side of the house. I flinched, heart racing, fearing the worst. I tried to convince myself that it was all in my head, that Mr. Johnson was probably just upset about something unrelated. But the fear wouldn't let go. I heard him talking to himself, his voice getting louder, more agitated. I didn't want to listen, didn't want to know what he was saying. I debated leaving the house, finding somewhere else to go for the night. But what if he was waiting outside? What if I walked right into danger? I considered calling 911, feeling a growing sense of urgency. But what if it was nothing? What if I overreacted? I heard him walking away, his footsteps fading into the distance. I cautiously peeked outside, he was gone. I stayed awake the rest of the night, heart pounding at every little sound, every creak of the house. The fear lingered, a feeling of being watched, of being in danger. The next day, I talked to some neighbors, cautiously asking if they'd heard or seen anything unusual. But no one seemed to know anything about Mr. Johnson's behavior. I debated approaching him, asking if everything was okay. But what if that escalated things? What if he was truly dangerous? I stayed on edge for days, jumping at every sound, every unexpected noise. The fear had rooted itself deep, an unsettling reminder of that harrowing night. It was a Friday night, and I received an invite from a friend, Sarah, for a small gathering at her place. It seemed like a casual get-together, nothing out of the ordinary. I arrived around 9 p.m. The atmosphere was relaxed, music playing softly in the background, a few friends chatting over drinks and snacks. It felt like a typical hangout. As the night progressed, the group decided to play some games. We laughed and joked having a good time. It was all fun and lighthearted. But as the clock ticked past midnight, something shifted. The mood changed, imperceptibly at first, but enough to make me uneasy. The conversations turned quieter, the smiles less frequent. I tried to shake off the feeling, blaming it on fatigue or the late hour. Someone suggested a game of truth or dare, and everyone agreed. It started innocently, with light-hearted dares and silly questions. But then, the dares grew more intense, the questions probing into personal territories. I felt a knot of discomfort forming in my stomach. Sarah suggested we move to the backyard, where things felt a bit more open and relaxed. But as we settled outside, the ambience grew eerie, the shadows cast by the dim lights elongating into darkness. The dares took a darker turn nudging beyond the boundaries of fun. People were being dared to do things they clearly didn't want to do, pressured into uncomfortable situations. I tried to lighten the mood, crack a joke, but the tension lingered. The atmosphere had turned from jovial to ominous. I noticed Sarah's demeanor had changed, her smile seemed forced, her eyes darting around nervously. It was as if she wasn't in control anymore. I excused myself to grab some water from inside the house, hoping a brief break would help calm my nerves. But as I stepped in, I heard hushed whispers coming from the living room. I hesitated, unsure if I should investigate. But curiosity got the better of me, and I edged closer, trying to make out what was being said. The conversation sounded strange, almost conspiratorial. They were discussing something about a ritual and summoning. Fear clutched at me, I didn't understand what was happening. I wanted to leave, to get out of there as fast as I could. I hurried back outside, trying to act normal, but my heart raced with unease. I looked around, noticing subtle changes, the darkness seemed thicker, the air colder. Sarah approached me, her smile tight, her voice unnaturally cheerful. She asked if I was having a good time, but her eyes seemed distant, almost empty. I tried to play it cool, said I was feeling a bit tired and might head home soon. But Sarah's demeanor shifted, she insisted I stay, almost aggressively. 
I felt a chill down my spine, a sense of danger building up. I made excuses about an early morning, backing away slowly, trying not to escalate the situation. As I made my way to the front door, the atmosphere turned hostile. The group's demeanor changed, their expressions darkening. I felt like I was being watched, like I was in danger. I rushed to the door, fumbling with the lock, my heart pounding in my chest. Sarah and the others gathered around, their faces contorted in a way that didn't seem human. Fear consumed me, I didn't understand what was happening, didn't know if I was hallucinating or if this was real. I managed to open the door and sprinted out into the night, not looking back until I reached the safety of my car. I drove away, heart racing, feeling like I'd narrowly escaped something sinister. I couldn't shake off the fear, the sense of dread. I didn't understand what had happened, what kind of gathering I had stumbled into. The next day, I received a message from Sarah, inviting me to another gathering. I didn't respond, I blocked her number and avoided that part of town altogether. I worked the late shift at a local diner, serving food to the night owls and occasional drunks. It was quiet most nights, mundane even, until that one fateful evening. It was close to midnight when a heated argument erupted between two co-workers. Tempers flared, voices rose, and the air thickened with tension. I tried to defuse the situation, stepping in to calm them down, but it only seemed to fuel their anger. Their disagreement escalated rapidly turning into a shouting match. The customers, sensing the tension, started to leave, leaving only a handful of us behind. I felt a sense of unease settle in, this wasn't just a normal disagreement. Their voices became more aggressive, their words turning into threats. It was like watching a storm brew, an impending disaster. I tried to reason with them, asking them to step outside, to cool off but neither of them was willing to back down. It was like a ticking time bomb waiting to explode. Suddenly, one of them shoved the other, and chaos erupted. Tables were knocked over, dishes clattered to the floor, and the situation spiraled out of control. I felt a wave of panic, this was turning into a dangerous confrontation. I tried to intervene, to separate them, but their rage was consuming them, blinding them to reason. The aggression escalated, punches were thrown, and the atmosphere turned chaotic. I felt a knot of fear form in my stomach, this wasn't just a workplace disagreement anymore. I tried to call the police discreetly, but the chaos around me made it impossible. I was trapped in the middle of a violent outburst, helpless and terrified. I shouted for someone to help, to call the authorities, but it was chaos, and nobody seemed able to hear me. The situation was spiraling out of control. I tried to reason with them again, but they were beyond reason, lost in their anger. The diner had become a battleground, and I was caught in the crossfire. I feared for my safety, realizing how quickly things could escalate, how dangerous the situation had become. I saw one of them reach for something, a glass bottle. I knew I had to get out, to find safety before things turned more volatile. I darted towards the back exit, hoping to slip away unnoticed. But as I reached the door, I heard a loud crash behind me, the sound of breaking glass. I didn't dare look back, adrenaline coursed through me as I ran out into the night. I didn't know what was happening inside, didn't know who was hurt. I didn't stop running until I reached a safe distance, my heart pounding, my breaths ragged. I felt a mixture of fear, panic and disbelief at what had just happened. I called the authorities explaining the situation as best as I could. I waited nearby until they arrived, afraid to go back, afraid of what I might find. The police entered the diner, and moments later, they brought out my co-workers in handcuffs. There was blood, broken glass, and chaos inside. I learned later that one of them had suffered severe injuries, and they were both facing charges. But that didn't erase the horror of that night, the fear that had gripped me. I quit my job, 
I couldn't go back there. Couldn't shake off the memories of that violent outburst. I was on a business trip, staying at a decent hotel in an unfamiliar city. The days had been tiring, filled with meetings and presentations, but that night, things took a frightening turn. I finished work late and returned to the hotel, exhausted. The lobby was nearly empty, the usual bustling crowd absent at this hour. I headed up to my room, eager to unwind and get some rest before another busy day. But as I approached the elevator, I noticed a group of shady-looking individuals hanging around the lobby, eyeing everyone who passed by. Ignoring them, I pressed the elevator button and waited. The door slid open, and I stepped inside, feeling their stares boring into me. As the elevator ascended, I felt a growing sense of unease. The atmosphere seemed charged with tension, and I couldn't shake off the feeling that I was being watched. I reached my floor, and as I stepped out, I glimpsed those same individuals loitering near the staircase, their cases following my every move. I quickened my pace, feeling a sense of urgency to reach the safety of my room. But as I fumbled with my keycard at the door, I heard footsteps behind me. I glanced back, heart pounding, and saw the group approaching, their expressions menacing. Fear gripped me, this didn't feel like a chance encounter. I managed to unlock my door slipping inside and locking it behind me. I leaned against it, trying to calm my racing heart. But then, there was a knock, a heavy, forceful knock that reverberated through the room. I froze, feeling a chill run down my spine. They were demanding entry, shouting threats, demanding that I open the door. Panic surged, I didn't know what they wanted or why they were after me. I rushed to call the front desk, but the line was busy. I felt a sense of isolation, trapped in my room with no way to seek help. The knocks grew louder, more insistent. I could hear their voices outside, aggressive and intimidating. I scanned the room, looking for anything that could help defend myself if they managed to break in. But I was unarmed, defenseless against their threats. I considered calling the police, but what would I say? That a group of strangers was trying to break into my room? It felt surreal, like a nightmare. I pressed myself against the door, hoping it would hold. I pray for help, for someone to intervene and put an end to this terrifying ordeal. The pounding continued, and I could hear them trying to force the door open. I braced myself, the adrenaline pumping through my veins. Minutes passed, each second feeling like an eternity. I didn't know if the door would hold, didn't know what they would do if they got inside. Then, suddenly, the commotion stopped. Silence enveloped the room, a stark contrast to the chaos just moments before. I cautiously approached the door, hesitant to look through the peephole. But when I did, they were gone vanished as quickly as they had appeared. I waited for what felt like hours, heart still racing, before daring to step out of the room. The hallway was empty, eerily quiet. I approached the front desk, shaken, and recounted what had happened. But the receptionist seemed unconcerned, dismissing it as a misunderstanding or a drunken mistake. I spent the rest of the night, sleepless and on edge, wondering who those individuals were and what they wanted from me. The next morning, I checked out of the hotel, relieved to leave that unsettling experience behind. But the fear and uncertainty lingered, a reminder of that terrifying encounter on a business trip gone horribly wrong. It was one of those nights where the city was unusually quiet. I returned home late, feeling weary after a long day's work. The apartment complex seemed deserted, the usual buzz of activity absent. I lived alone on the seventh floor, 
and as I entered the elevator, I felt a strange sense of unease. It was eerily quiet, the familiar hum of the elevator seeming more ominous than usual. The ride-up felt longer than usual, each floor passing by in a heavy silence. When I reached my floor, I stepped out, feeling a chill run down my spine. As I made my way down the hallway, I noticed a flickering light by the stairwell, a subtle detail that seemed out of place in the dimly lit corridor. I hesitated but decided to investigate, thinking it might just be a faulty bulb. As I approached, I noticed the stairwell door slightly ajar, a thin strip of flickering light escaping from within. My heart started pounding, this was unusual, something wasn't right. I had an unsettling feeling, like I was stepping into danger without knowing it. I cautiously pushed the door open, and what I saw froze me in my tracks. There were multiple people inside, wearing dark clothing, their faces obscured by masks. My heart raced, this wasn't a casual situation. I tried to process what I was witnessing, what were they doing here? What did they want? I moved back, trying to remain unseen, trying to process what my next move should be. Fear nodded me, I was alone, outnumbered, and didn't have a clue about their intentions. They seemed preoccupied, but the air was charged with tension, like any sudden movement could set them off. I was terrified, rooted to the spot, unable to move or think clearly. I felt an instinctual urge to escape, to get as far away as possible from whatever was happening in that stairwell. But I couldn't just leave, I needed to know what they were doing there, why they were breaching security in our building. I turned, trying to retrace my steps, hoping to reach my apartment and call for help. But as I moved down the hallway, I heard footsteps behind me. Panic surged, they had noticed me. I quickened my pace, the adrenaline pumping through my veins, urging me to run, to find safety. I reached my apartment, fumbled with the key, and slammed the door shut behind me. I leaned against it, trying to steady my breathing, trying to make sense of what had just happened. I didn't dare turn on the lights, I didn't want to draw any attention to myself. I crept to the window, peeking through the blinds, but the hallway was empty. I debated calling the police, but what would I say? That I saw some suspicious individuals in the stairwell? I didn't have any concrete evidence of wrongdoing. I stayed awake all night, listening for any sound, any sign of intrusion. Every creak or shuffle made my heart race, I felt like a sitting duck, vulnerable and exposed. The next morning, I approached the building management, trying to report the incident discreetly. But they seemed dismissive, assuring me it was probably just a misunderstanding. I couldn't shake off the fear, I felt like I was living in a place where security had been breached, where danger lurked in the shadows. I became hypervigilant, always checking the peephole before stepping out, always listening for any unusual sounds. I didn't feel safe anymore, and that one night's encounter haunted me, leaving me with a constant sense of dread. I planned a weekend getaway at a remote cabin in the woods, seeking solace from the chaos of city life. It was nestled deep within the forest, far from any semblance of civilization. As the sun dipped below the horizon, the tranquility of the surroundings felt serene. The cabin was rustic yet inviting, a perfect escape from the mundane. Night fell swiftly, enveloping the surroundings in an impenetrable darkness. The quietude of the woods was unsettling, and the silence seemed to amplify every sound. I settled in, trying to enjoy the solitude, but an odd sensation lingered a feeling of being watched, observed by unseen eyes. As the night deepened, a sense of unease settled in. It wasn't just the natural sounds of the forest, it was something more, something unsettling. I brushed it off as my imagination, trying to immerse myself in a book. But then, a sound disrupted the silence, a faint rustling outside, footsteps on the leaf-laden ground. My heart skipped a beat, I listened intently, hoping it was just an animal passing by. But the footsteps persisted, growing closer, too deliberate to be an innocent passerby. 
I felt a knot form in my stomach, a growing sense of dread. I moved to the window, peering out into the darkness, but the thick foliage obscured any visibility. Then, I heard it a voice, hushed but discernible. My pulse quickened, realizing there were intruders outside, and they weren't just passing through. I tried to rationalize, to convince myself it was a harmless mistake, but the murmurs grew louder, more distinct. Fear clutched at me, this wasn't a coincidence. I contemplated calling for help, but the cabin's remote location meant no cell reception. I was on my own, facing an unknown threat in the dead of night. I tiptoed to the door, trying not to make a sound, but my trembling hands betrayed my efforts. As I reached for the doorknob, it rattled a soft, deliberate jostle. Panic surged, they knew I was inside. I retreated, hastily locking the door, but the realization hit me they were trying to get in. I scanned the cabin, searching for anything to defend myself. But in my hasty escape from the city, I hadn't thought to equip the cabin with any form of protection. The intruders outside grew bolder, banging on the door now, demanding entry. Their voices were menacing, their intentions malevolent. I retreated to a corner, trying to remain hidden, my heart racing. The cabin's flimsy doors and windows felt like a thin barrier against the looming threat outside. They persisted, shouting threats, promising dire consequences if I didn't comply. I felt trapped, isolated, like a prey cornered by predators in the night. I contemplated escape, but the dense forest offered no refuge. I was at their mercy, hoping against hope for someone, anyone, to come to my aid. Minutes dragged on like an eternity, the relentless pounding on the door echoing through the cabin. I felt a mixture of terror and helplessness, not knowing what would happen next. Then, abruptly, the noise ceased. The sudden silence was deafening, a stark contrast to the chaos just moments before. I dared not move, barely even breathed, fearing it was a ploy to catch me off guard. I waited, listening for any sign of their departure. Minutes stretched into agonizing hours. I didn't know if they were still there, waiting for the right moment to strike. Eventually, as the first rays of dawn filtered through the trees, I cautiously approached the window, peeking out. They were gone, leaving behind a haunting silence. I didn't know if it was over, if they'd come back, or if I was safe. I stayed huddled in the corner until daylight fully broke, until I felt some semblance of security. When morning arrived, I fled the cabin, leaving behind the solitude turned sinister by that night's encounter. The serenity of the woods was forever tainted by the nightmare I had endured. I found a great deal on an item online, and the seller agreed to meet for the exchange late at night. It seemed convenient at the time, quick and easy. But now, as I parked my car in the dimly lit street, a sense of apprehension crept in. The neighborhood was quiet, almost too quiet for a bustling city. The street lights cast long, eerie shadows that danced in the gentle night breeze. I texted the seller, letting them know I had arrived, and moments later, a figure emerged from the shadows, a silhouette, barely discernible in the darkness. I hesitated, feeling a tinge of discomfort. This wasn't how I envisioned the transaction. But I shrugged it off, attributing it to the late hour and my own nerves. As the figure drew closer, I noticed something off about their demeanor and unsettling stillness, an aura of unpredictability. They handed over the package without a word, and as I inspected it, I felt a prickle of unease. Something wasn't right, the package seemed hastily wrapped, almost as if they were eager to get rid of it. I attempted to engage in small talk, but the seller remained silent, their gaze fixed, almost unnaturally so. As I turned to leave, I felt a presence behind me, a lurking sensation that made my skin crawl. I quickened my pace, trying to put distance between us but footsteps echoed behind me, growing louder and quicker. I dared not look back, fearing what I might see. My heart raced, 
panic rising in my chest. Was this just my imagination running wild, or was I being followed? I tried to navigate through the deserted streets, taking every turn I could to lose whoever was behind me. But the footsteps persisted, relentless and determined. My breath hitched. I was being chased, hunted in the dead of night. My mind raced, trying to formulate an escape plan, but fear clouded any rational thought. I saw a faint light ahead at a storefront, perhaps a chance to seek help. I sprinted, my heart pounding in my ears, desperation fueling my movements. As I approached the light, relief washed over me. But then, just as I reached the entrance, a hand grasped my shoulder, a cold, clammy grip that sent shivers down my spine. I spun around, adrenaline surging through my veins. It was the cellar, their face contorted in a menacing glare. Panic seized me. I struggled, trying to break free from their grip, but they were unnervingly strong. Their eyes bore into mine, devoid of any warmth, filled with an unsettling intensity. I felt a surge of terror, an instinctual realization that this encounter was anything but ordinary. I managed to break away, stumbling into the store, pleading for help from the bewildered clerk. The seller lingered at the entrance, their presence looming like a specter. The clerk dialed the police, their voice a distant echo as fear clouded my senses. I felt like prey cornered by a predator, vulnerable and exposed. Minutes passed like an eternity, the store's walls offering a fragile barrier against the looming threat outside. The police arrived, their presence a semblance of safety amidst the chaos. But when they went to confront the cellar, they were nowhere to be found, vanished into the night, leaving behind a haunting sense of dread. I recounted the ordeal, the fear still palpable in my voice. The police assured me they'd investigate, but I couldn't shake off the lingering unease. I returned home, shaken by the night's events. I didn't know who that person was or what their intentions were, and the uncertainty gnawed at me, leaving me with a haunting fear of what might have been. I was invited to a community event at a nearby center, a seemingly harmless late night affair to support a local cause. It seemed like a chance to connect with neighbors, unwind, and contribute to something meaningful. The center was bustling when I arrived, vibrant with chatter and laughter. People milled around, engaging in various activities, the atmosphere warm and inviting. But as the night wore on, the energy shifted a subtle but palpable transformation. The once jovial ambience turned murky, an unsettling undercurrent threading through the air. I brushed it off as fatigue or an overactive imagination, trying to enjoy the evening. However, a nagging feeling of discomfort persisted, intensifying with every passing moment. I noticed a group of individuals, their demeanor seemingly out of place, an air of hostility that clashed with the event's intended spirit. They lingered in the shadows, casting furtive glances that made my skin crawl. As the night progressed, their presence became more pronounced, their hushed conversations and furtive movements drawing attention. I felt a knot forming in my stomach, a sense of impending unease. I tried to ignore it, but then, amidst the crowd, a commotion erupted and argument, intense and heated. The group I had noticed earlier was at the center of it, their voices escalating, their anger palpable. I felt a chill run down my spine, an unsettling feeling that things were about to escalate into something beyond a mere disagreement. Tension crackled in the air, the room's once jovial spirit morphed into an atmosphere tinged with fear and uncertainty. People around us started dispersing, seeking safety in the periphery. I debated leaving, but before I could make a move, the altercation took a menacing turn. The group's aggressive demeanor turned towards innocent bystanders, their hostility spreading like a contagion. Panic surged through me, I felt trapped, surrounded by a brewing storm of hostility. I scanned for an exit, but the chaos made it impossible to discern a safe path. Shouts echoed, tempers flared, and the room descended into chaos. The once congenial event spiraled into a nightmarish altercation, a scene straight out of a horror film. I tried to keep my distance, attempting to blend into the chaos, 
but the group's aggression seemed uncontainable. They targeted anyone within reach, their intentions malicious and unpredictable. Fear gripped me, a primal instinct urging me to find safety. I made a desperate dash towards the exit, dodging the chaos unfolding around me. Adrenaline surged as I fled the tumult, my heart pounding in my chest. The sounds of the altercation faded as I sprinted through the streets, the fear of being pursued driving my steps. I found refuge in a nearby building, the chaos of the community center still echoing in my mind. I trembled, haunted by the disturbing altercation I had witnessed. The night's events replayed in my mind, a nightmare I couldn't shake off. The once familiar community center had transformed into a place of terror, leaving me with a haunting fear of what might have transpired had I stayed. I later learned that the altercation had escalated into violence, resulting in injuries and arrests.